Nah, no, I didn't really think about it growing up. Didn't have to, I mean, why would I? You know, my hometown, at least at that point, was 98% white. Really, the biggest question was, are you Lutheran or are you Catholic? It's changing. Hey, my name's Corey Heppola. I'm a radio host, husband, father, and I was born and raised in Ottertail County, Minnesota. Now, growing up, I was in such a hurry to leave that I never really got to know my home. What did I miss? What changed? I was going to find out. Hey, How's it going, going, Rudy? Good, how are you? Good to see you. Welcome to Hi Pelican guys. Rapids. Yeah, Pelican Rapids. It's been a while, probably since I was just out of high school. It's the home of Pelican Pete and this guy, Rudy Martinez, the director of finance at Pelican Rapids High School. This is my friend, Abdul. Hey. Hi, how are you, Corey? Doing? Nice to see you. Okay. Yeah, Hi. Welcome, man. <laughs> this is great. Pelican Rapids, at a smaller scale, is as diverse as Minneapolis and St. Paul Public. Like per capita? Per capita. Yeah. So it's amazing to see. Hmm. I didn't know that. Uh, and our Somali uh, community started showing up in the early 2000s here in Pelican Rapids. And they just been booming. And one of the things that brought them to Pelican Rapids really was the meat processing plant in town that is owned by Genio. Genio is turkey products and it's owned by Hormel Foods out of Wilmer, Minnesota. Genio has six locations, five in Minnesota, one right here in Pelican Rapids. So lots of job opportunities. And they have been just vibrant in the community. And it's amazing them. It's amazing for us to see how they're growing into the, really the fabrics of Pelican Rapids, now owning their own store. Perfect. Awesome. Thank you so much. You're Cheers. Welcome. Thank you. Cheers. We have a, a large population of our uh, Somali kids in our soccer team. So a lot of the times they tell us that they come here on Sundays, watch soccer, and it's the thing to do. It's, it's a very communal team. Even now that I'm back and I understand a little bit more of the macroeconomics of our small community is, you know, we have a shortage of labor. You know, we always hear from our employers that they need people. We have yeah. jobs. How did Rudy end up here? On a Greyhound bus. You know, he was born in Mexico. His family immigrated to Pelican Rapids in the winter of 1997, the winter. So they got off the bus in rural Minnesota for the first time in the middle of winter. I walked out and the snow was much taller than I was yeah. at the time. Yeah. And you know, being uh, first in the US, stepping out into this winter first wonderland. Time it. <laughs> I was in I was in shock. I was like, where did my parents bring us to? Yeah. But, and they stayed. Rudy graduated from Pelican Rapids High School in 2007, and as he grew up, so did the town around him. So just behind us, we have actually the first uh, uh, Mexican store that opened up about 10 years or so. And just like uh, the Somali shop, it you know it offers a variety of products from Mexico, and it kind of carries that same concept of that community feeling that they bring those unique products that we just can't find in your big box superstores. So we're going to go try out Escobar's. Escobar's are, uh, uh, they were one of the first families to actually show up in Pelican Rapids. Yep. And uh, they now have their own family owned restaurant. It's some of the best food around. Now my parents didn't really grow up with much, but one thing that they always had was food. So they were kind of self-sustaining farmers so during harvest times or during, during, during holidays or celebrations, food is what brought family together. I hope it's not too spicy. No, I love spice. My wife's Jamaican. We, oh, we do spice, yeah. Uh, you know, I was always a little bit dangerous. I mean, throwing pepper on everything like corn and potatoes and mac and cheese. Now I just, I put jerk seasoning on everything. But that's what I think is very unique is that you have all these different flavors and cultures mm -hmm. in in this small little town. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's and you have options. <laughs> that's the best part, right? Nobody nobody really highlights that piece is the options. You know, you you think about the city and people love the city because of all the amenities that it offers, but we have them here in this little radius of four blocks. Like it's all gone. <laughs> it's pretty yeah. good. You weren't joking when you said you were hungry. Yeah. Yeah. So what'd you think of it? I loved it. Awesome. I loved it. I mean, I'm practically licking the plate. <laughs> so. I got a little bit more to go, but I got a little bit of a surprise for you. I hope that uh, you're ready to get a little messy. Uh, <laughs> 
my mom uh, volunteered to show us how to make homemade tortillas from scratch using our hands. I, I hope that's okay with you. I'd be honored. That would that would be great. I've never done that, <laughs> so uh, I'm in. I'm game. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. How are welcome, you? Welcome. Welcome. Good. Thank yeah. you for having us. Okay, so this is Rudy's parents' house, and all I want is an awkward kid shot hanging on the wall. That's what I'm here for. <laughs> there we go. That's what. That's the picture I'm looking for. That's a. That's a haircut there, and that's a smile, sort of. And then there's a funny story behind that haircut. <laughs> My dad didn't know how to cut hair, and we didn't know that there was any barbers in town. <laughs> so he literally put a plate on my head. <laughs> and the old bowl cut. Yeah. <laughs> and then just traced around. I was not happy. <laughs> yep. Yolanda is just asking is if you are uh, thirsty to drink some hot chocolate, from, warm up a little bit from the cold weather. I'd love some, yeah. It's, it's authentic, it's Mexican, um, and it's a little bit richer, mm -hmm. uh, but it doesn't have that kind of sweet, sweet taste that you get from, from the chocolate here in the States, so it's, it's, it's really good. Oh, did you catch that? This person here, she's Katie, Rudy's wife. These two have been a couple for a long time. Growing up, Katie's family was the motorcycle enthusiast, and Katie learned to ride a motorcycle before she learned how to drive a car. So, really? <laughs> yeah. Yep. So all of our teen years, I was the passenger, and Katie was Katie That's was right. the driver, and it was it was so fun. Rudy and Katie met when they were young, dated throughout high school, and graduated from Pelican Rapids. We spent a lot of time kayaking. Mm. Uh, then this summer we. We got a uh, paddle boat as a gift, so we spent a lot of time on the river. They stayed together, moved away for college, started their careers in larger cities, got married, had a baby, and then wanted to move back home closer to family. We live right across from a soccer field, so whether we're playing as a family or I'm coaching or we're doing the Sunday Soccer League in town, soccer is always some way involved in our life. And then motorcycling. And now I gotta ask. So my wife is black, okay. um, and you guys being a you know a mixed family as yeah. well, and being in a small town, have you you know experienced anything? Any comments? Any? Yeah. I, I don't even know how to phrase it, but yeah. like any experiences that that have been difficult to, to navigate or, or things that you've had to talk about or explain to each other. When I first came to the States in 97, I was in second grade and at the time, we didn't even have an EL teacher. So... English language. English language, thank you, yeah. English learner teacher. So when I came, I sat in the back of the classroom for four months without not knowing what was going on in the classroom for four months so. for four months and then over the over the summer going into third grade I actually learned English watching cartoons I mean that's not an issue exclusive to Pelican Rapids that's a statewide issue and and it's more than just a language barrier Minnesota is one of the best states in the nation for education yet we have some of the worst disparities you know it's it's complex and, and it's only the start I think for Katie, the first time that she experienced it being with me is when we were we were teenagers. We were maybe 15, 16 years old. And then we went to Walmart and it was myself, Katie, and a few friends. And, and we were walking around Walmart and Katie tells me, why are there people, why are there workers following us? And I looked at Katie and I said, they always do. You know, it's just never something I've ever had to even think about. You know, I'm a white guy. Nobody ever thought just automatically that I might steal something or hurt someone or that I wasn't the right person for the job. You know, that, wasn't, that wasn't my experience, but for others, that's, that's very real. There's an implicit bias towards people of color, and these stereotypes help set up barriers. Now, it's not always deliberate, it's not always evil, but it exists. Of course there's been challenges, yeah. you know, from being some of the first Hispanic families to actually move into the area, there were challenges. For us to be ed further educated too, 
and for us to help educate others and to gain that perspective. Because without it just blazing over people, that, that won't bring the change yep. that's needed. We, we have to work together and we have to see uh, and, and listen to all sides in order for true change to happen. I'm optimistic though. Mm -hmm. And I'm optimistic because of people like yourself. And I do see this going in a better place to where our kids are growing up in a, in a place that is more inclusive. As we started to, uh, to go down this path with our community, we started to become more accepting of each other and eventually, and eventually acknowledge our differences. And, and really, that's, that's the beauty of Pelican. Um, we have tortillas almost every day with meals. We have a tortilla as kind of our silverware to scoop up the food. Uh, so what? how do you make tortillas? Like what is, we got flour and then? Yeah, we have flour and then we actually have this special mix called masa, which mm -hmm. comes from a, a, a very unique corn. So now once she mixes all the dough and everything, she starts to prep it in, in tiny little pieces and that's what your tortilla is gonna be. There's a plastic so the dough doesn't stick to the actual wood of the machine okay. that she's using. She'll throw it in, oh. squish it together, and you get that perfect, perfect tortilla disc shape. And okay. then she throws it into the hot pan. Can I try one too? Yeah, absolutely. So, so yep. just grab one. Just yeah. grab one of those. Okay. And then throw it down here. Yep, throw it right on there. And then cover it up like that. Yep, exactly correct. And then this part down. Yep. Yeah. And, and then the, this part yep, down like and that. Squish as hard as you can. There you go. That's good. Now open it up. Now you, open, you open up the plastic, and this is where you learn to be a master. There you go. Oh. And there you go. All right. Look at that beauty. <laughs> this is like literally authentic, authentic Mexican salsa. And this is the way that the Aztecs actually made it. And literally what you do is you just grind the tomato and the pepper that's underneath it, just like that. So eventually we'll add a little bit of salt. Some people like a little bit of garlic in there. Some people like to add a few more peppers, just depending on how spicy it is. Do you need another pepper? Uh, yep, yeah, throw another pepper. Is Rudy starting to sweat here? Is it is it too spicy for him? So. I can't tolerate my mom's salsa. It is, you can't? It is like, <laughs> it makes me cry. Hot, fresh tortilla out of the hot pan. Then you have some fresh Mexican cheese. Okay. You, beans. And then you, you put the, the cheese on it with a little bit of that pepper. And it is such a delicacy. Okay. And there is your, your perfect taco burrito. Fresh tortillas with cheese. Homemade salsa. This is normally what we would have for breakfast. Mm. Okay, a little bite. <clears throat> it's good. It's good. Yeah, it's good. And what was the driving force to come back to, uh, back home to Pelican Rapids? from the values of, of knowing, any, uh, knowing your neighbor and really helping each other out to really the opportunity to experience diversity in a small town setting. And that's what brought us back. I think there's this idea of what rural is, that you gotta be born and raised here, from here. And that's cool. But looking around now, it, it feels like that's changing. Rural can be diverse with new people who don't look like me. I mean, that's, that's cool too. Anyone can choose a rural life. You don't have to be from there. Hey, last one, huh? I got the mic. Last one. Yep. Um, so, what do, you guys, what do you guys wanna talk about? Oh. Yeah. You're not squeezing them. He's just gonna be hypnotized. You're not oh! All right, come on. I mean, aren't you gonna tie up your little narrative now? Ask me if I wanna move back home? I mean, we did hear a pretty convincing case from Buddy Brent. But I think one of the things I realized is like all the stuff that I love in the cities, like, you know, going to a concert or going to a game or something like that, like, I can still do that. Yeah, I mean, we would. Yeah, we would move back home, sure. 
We won't though right now because we, we can't right now. But that's okay, I, I, I fell in love again with the place that I grew up with and, and this time for different reasons. There we go. Let Am I straight? Gen gen yep, gently let it out and we're gonna go. Uh, oh, you're good. I feel like I went too fast. No. Beauty is all around us in rural Minnesota, in urban Minnesota, in people of all colors. Right now, it may feel like two different Minnesotas, sparked by our differences, politics, race, religion. But in actuality, it's all of our unique voices and perspectives working together that can make us even stronger. It starts with us, though, listening and wanting to understand someone or someplace else. The great news is, it's never too late.